Good morning kids and today we're checking out a brand new video from the game to this about the complete lore of Minecraft. Finally, after like what, two years of theories, we're finally here. Hopefully at the true ending of Minecraft and what it all means. Let's go. Today we end the horror. Four years, three games, 35 theories, all leading up to this Wait, what moment. the? Uh, hold on, haven't we done this intro before? Uh, that was for FNAF, this is Minecraft, it's totally different. Ah, there oh. we go. Except Minecraft doesn't have three games, it's got one. So, I don't know where you're getting that from. Oh, hey, old intro! Wow, this is from back before they even saw a boot theory. Love it. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's been building Minecraft's lore one block at a time. You know, for <laughs> as much nice. attention as FNAF gets on the channel, it's easy to overlook what we've done for other game franchises. 46 Mario theories, 31 Whoa. Pokemon theories, 3 oh, okay. Hello Neighbor theories, which doesn't seem like a whole <laughs> lot, but let's be honest with ourselves, it's probably too many. But of them all, uh, I would say maybe. that Minecraft series is probably the most important. 35 episodes in total, and it's a pretty impressive collection. Can you punch a Nice. What's a creeper? Is the overworld a sphere? Or ah, now the uh, creeper one. That's one I remember. Turns out the creepers are mutated moss monsters. That's why they go boom. Or cube. But I think our biggest contribution to this franchise has to be figuring out that there was an actual story hidden inside this seemingly storyless game. For as long as <laughs> Minecraft had been around, and oh, for yeah. as many videos existed about the topic, we were able to crack into something that no one had noticed before. That the placement of the blocks, the treasures hidden inside of chests, the spawn mm -hmm. locations, the item drops, all of them told a story. And so, over the next four years, we Everything chipped away at that story, connected. bit by bit, mob by mob. The Enderman, the Drowned, the Wither, the Warden. And over the years, a story came into focus. A story of an ancient civilization's rise and their tragic fall. A tale of hubris and excess. A tale that serves as a warning to us, the player, out here in the real world. Except there is just and one what does problem. It all mean? 35 theories, it's a lot to keep track of. And just like we <laughs> often see that. with FNAF, I started seeing a number of comments over in the subreddit begging me to set the record straight. To make one up-to-date definitive resource compiling all of our theories into one coherent location. So I put and all these theories onto the crafting table and enchanted <laughs> them with Efficiency 5 to turn those 35 theories into this one easy to digest 25 30 minute ish video not exactly sure where it's uh going. we're eating at about a 23 so this video that i'm recording is going to be about 25 26 in the land anyway we'd best gulp down that potion of swiftness if we want to get through all of this Okay, you ready? Oh, well, tasty. not quite, because before we get to all that, I just wanted to quickly tell you that the FNAF theory wear line is officially oh, bad. come on, man. Never make a person waste a potion. You know that. We're going to take a quick cut. Wasn't too big of a cut, actually. We could have actually Let's watched go. that. It's like five, ten seconds. Our story begins with go. Minecraft Legends, a game that only came out in April of last year, but gave us a lot of lore to chew on. The overworld's mm, in danger. The piglins have come from the nether and are now invading the overworld. When the game puts the invasion down to greed, I have a suspicion that it's due to something else. Sure, the piglins are greedy for gold, we see that in vanilla Minecraft, and there is plenty of gold in Minecraft Legends, but the nether isn't exactly low on that stuff. They don't use things like diamonds, or iron, or tools, or armor, they just hoard all that in chests. It's they don't understand gold. their real value. Instead, I believe it's they invaded the gold. overworld because the nether was in trouble. You see, the nether used to be a cool and icy place. That's the only way for the basalt deltas to have formed. Basalt mm -hmm. requires blue ice, the coldest ice imaginable to form, and for a lava to flow next to it above a layer of soul soil, which means that ice must have been naturally forming in the nether at one point. However, as we see in Legends, the piglins have industrialized. They have golden swords and armor, items that require gold ingots that can't be found naturally. They have to be Everyone smelted from hot. nether gold ore or or crafted using gold nuggets. This process, in turn, created greenhouse gases, causing the intense heating of the atmosphere down in the nether. And because the nether is also two and a half times mm -hmm. smaller than the overworld, less heat is needed to make all that ice melt and the water to ultimately run dry. This leaves the piglins looking for a new world that isn't a fiery wasteland to call their own, and so they look <laughs> out to the overworld. They this is where our first builder comes in. They're busy mining away in a normal Minecraft world, but are interrupted by three godlike beings called hosts, the caretakers of the 
overworld. They ask this the mysterious builder to oh. help save the hmm. overworld from the piglin threat, giving you the tools necessary to do the job. Within this case, burn the flames of creation. The flames will call upon friends to fight by your side. This is the banner of courage. Raise it high, and this world will rise to your aid. With the right melodies from the Okay, I, I still can't get behind these two having such switch voices. Like, you think small guy, light voice. Big guy, deep voice. But no, small guy, deep voice. Big guy, s small voice? It, it, it always throws me. Loot. The LAs will gather your resources. Keep them safe for you and build whatever you need. Thanks to the LA and the hosts, this mysterious builder stops the piglin invasion and peace is restored to the overworld. Also All that remains think. of the conflict are broken nether portals scattered throughout the overworld. But it's still a bittersweet ending. The mobs that helped win the battle now have a taste for fighting. What's happening? How did they learn to fight? By watching our hero. This is what turns them into the violent mobs that we know in vanilla Minecraft. Even the villagers weren't immune to this effect. After being given the tools to fight, a group of them would continue to have anger within them once the war is over. They were dubbed the Illagers. Illagers. And their yep. existence proved that what was meant to be a time of peace was actually cursed by the knowledge of you know hold on i actually do wonder why did they stop being called illagers it's literally just village but the v was dropped are they could have been called something else like just replaced the v instead of dropping entirely uh oh wait no yeah i mean that technically is the term pillagers but that's only for a specific type of the illagers oh that kind Violence of sucks in war can you Oops. dig it? Hold on, we'll be right back to dig it. And we're back to dig it. Thanks to the Builder and their companions bringing peace, the hosts decide it's time to leave. There are endless worlds out there waiting to be explored. Letting the Builders so be we're just gonna the leave. World. So they begin to do what they did when the hosts first called them. They mine and they craft. They start a new civilization. They become the first of the ancient Builders. And we see this mm -hmm. on some of the Pottery Sherds from the Trails and Tales update. Pottery Sherds in the real world tell us the story of past civilizations. And so Sherds like Howl and Sheaf depict the earliest parts Ooh. of the ancient Builder society. Where wolves were some of the first animals domesticated, and wheat was one of the earliest wheat. and easiest <laughs> crops to grow. However, this rapid growth is the beginning of the ancient builder's biggest problem, over-harvesting and depleting the world of its natural resources. Yeah, they needed sorry. food, and so they hunted the creatures from Minecraft legends like the Regal Tiger and Big Beak into extinction, completely destroying their habitats so they could build this new society. The same goes for resources like diamond, copper, and coal. At first, these were just lying around on the surface of the overworld, but by modern day, we're digging deep into the earth before finding just one block of diamond ore. This led to valuable resources I mean, becoming right. scarce and splitting the ancient builders into tribes based on their location and the natural resources around them. We see this in the Sherds, which are scattered across different biomes, all depicting different resources and technologies. Mm -hmm. They become hoarders of their own specific resource, and thus trade begins between the tribes. Even the villagers, who used to just simply give the builders their resources, they also got in on the trading action and are still doing it to this very day. As time goes on, <laughs> the ancient only. builders continue in their worship of the hosts, the godlike beings that brought them there, building structures like the desert and jungle temples, all with unique designs to demonstrate their different resources and culture, much like Neat. we see out in the real world. But the Ocean Tribe decided to take beautiful. it a step further. This tribe of fishermen that we learn about from the Angler Shirt built the massive ocean monuments, styled like a ziggurat, a structure that was used to connect the people to their gods. This was the ancient builders Supposedly. trying to reconnect with the hosts, hoping that they would maybe return and save them from this world that they created. They even built a replica <laughs> of the Well of Fate atop the structure, made oh, it out yeah. of the same prismarine, and placed an offering of gold at its core, the spoils of their victory against the piglins, all in mm -hmm. the hope that it would bring the hosts back. What they don't realize though is that the real I'm monster home. isn't other tribes, it's themselves. The fishermen continue to destroy the natural environment for resources, crafting and smelting tools and ore, causing pollution and eventually leading to massive flooding. They try desperately to protect their monuments, these temples that the hosts may one day return to, and so they fill these monuments with sponges, trying to hold Sponge. back the rising water, but it's too much for them to handle. The water keeps rising, and they can't hold it back from filling the monuments. But they don't give up. Pottery sherds found in cold underwater ruins like Blade, Explorer, and Plenty reveal that this tribe was more than just fishermen. They were pirates. They would Yo. go from village to village <laughs> trying it. to gather resources that they had squandered, Ooh. which led to other tribes like the Desert Tribe fighting back. Mine and prize sherds found in the desert temples depict the tribe creating mine shafts, now needing to go deep underground to find the precious materials that were once so easy to find. So with pirates common. on the loose, looting and pillaging, they needed to find a way to protect their resources. And they found that protection 
in with a creature that they once called an ally. We see their face chiseled into the sandstone walls of their temples, a creature with the ultimate defense system, the Creeper. The desert Self tribe booby trapped their temples with TNT, similar to how real world pyramids use traps to scare away thieves, though not quite as explosive. If anyone tried to take their valued possessions, the TNT would be their last fail safe. No one was going to mess with this tribe and get away with it. But the pirates were <laughs> really only result. after one thing. Within the shipwrecks you find across the overworld, there are chests containing treasure. I, I meant to say last resort. I don't know why I said result. My bad. Maps. These maps can lead you to buried chests containing the Heart of the Sea. The Heart of the Sea, when crafted with eight Nautilus shells, can create a conduit, an item capable of giving anyone in the area water-breathing night vision and haste. This was the Ocean Tribe's Neat. final hope of surviving the constantly rising water. And while the pirates looked for this treasure, the fishermen that stayed back home created the Guardians, machine bodyguards for their sacred temples as a last resort of protecting it. Given the state that we mm -hmm. find the ocean monuments in in vanilla Minecraft, we know that they weren't successful. The pirates they didn't failed. find the treasure in time, and so the fishermen left behind in the monuments become wait hold on hold on hold on you clearly gave him an eye patch but you have him with two eyes uh map pad i think there's a little bit of inconsistency though or just conflicting results like eye pads or eye you can't have both Unless you're foxy. Wrapped in water and transformed into the drowned. Still carrying nautilus shells as well as tridents. Ancient tools for fishing. They continue to stay by their monuments. Never having their call for help answered by the hosts. All they have left are the guardians. Who still recognize their creators and don't attack. Sadly, the fishermen weren't the only tribe to be facing hardship. After seeing the devastation that the ocean tribe had caused to themselves in spite of their constant prayers. The desert tribe gave hey, up boy. on the hosts ever returning. And took matters into their own hands. The desert temples depict the Ankh. A symbol of life. This is what the desert tribe dedicated their time and effort towards. Rather than waiting for the hosts to return, they wanted a way to preserve their lives and resurrect those who had already died. But how could they do that? Bring the builders were reminded of the spawners given to them by the hosts. These spawners could create mobs from nothing but stone and wood, but they required an energy source to fuel the flames of creation. And that fuel was lapis lazuli. And the only way they mm -hmm. knew how to get it was from war, killing piglins. That's when the desert tribe realized something that ancient cultures in our own world used to believe, that lapis contains the souls of gods and monsters. This is what the ancient oh, builders yes, needed. Supposedly. And to get it, they needed to go to the home of the piglins to collect more of this magical stone. They to needed to hell. go to the I nether. I mean the nether. Oop. We'll be right back. And we're back. Welcome to the Once the builders arrive in HE Double Hockey Sticks, they set up a camp, knowing that this is going to be a long journey. There, they build the nether fortresses to store the resources that they brought with them, like saddles, horse armor, diamonds, and iron. What was already a wasteland gets harvested by the builders. They destroy the piglin bastions, they kill the piglins within to use their souls in the lapis to create <laughs> life of their own. But the plan <laughs> oh, doesn't damn. quite work. The dead piglin souls don't turn into lapis as they did before. Why? Well, it's because the souls work differently in the nether. Rather than forming into magical stones, they transfer into the ground, into the sand. As their comrades mm -hmm. fall, their souls are sucked from their bodies into the ground to create soul sand. It's then that a new mob's created, the Withered skeleton. Suddenly, the Here ancient builders go. are left fighting against the bodies of their own fallen warriors, without souls but still clinging on to their I mean, one thing though is that the widowed skeleton is clearly taller than the player. Like, almost every mob is at least two blocks tall. The widowed skeleton is like 2.5 blocks tall. Like, two blocks on a slab. So, I guess these ancient builders were just bigger as well? I don't know. You tell me. Defending what they had once built themselves. The ancient builders had not only sucked the land dry of its natural resources, but they also accidentally created mobs that made the already deadly landscape even more dangerous. They do eventually return to the overworld, and they come bearing riches. Blaze rods, nether wart, ghast tears, all containing magical properties. And so the builders hmm. begin to okay. brew potions, good, depicting the achievement in the brewer sherds. The ancient builders were now able to surpass their physical abilities. They could be faster. They could resist lava. They could even regenerate generate themselves. The only thing they <laughs> had to battle yet was death itself. And so, equipped with soul sand and a bunch of wither skulls, they press on with their experiments. They combine the life-giving soul sand with the wither skeleton heads of their fallen comrades, oh, carving no. its face into the red sandstone walls and depicting their worship to it on sherds. They could take care of themselves, and now armed with the knowledge to create life itself, they thought that they had finally done what the gods could not all those years ago, protect the overworld. As they placed the final head, there was a flash of light and a roar. The wither 
was born. But despite their success, up. their hubris would ultimately be their downfall. The wither was uncontrollable. It destroyed the cities that they'd created, leaving nothing in its wake. Not even the other tribes were safe. The destruction was like nothing ancient builders had ever seen before. And so they did the only thing that they could do. They ran. They ran deep <sighs> underground, where the wither's blasts would meet more resistance from the stone and deep slate. But their persistence never wavered. They would have to find a way to fix this. They would be able to return They're to the gonna die. They had to make <laughs> this right, no matter the cost. Oh, and here we are in the Once again, the dog. ancient builders were forced to start over, rebuilding a civilization that we now know as the Ancient City, a wide underground space that contains fragments of the builders' past adventures. Items like soul lanterns and soul torches are used to light the city, powered by the souls from their time in the nether. Enchanted items and potions of regeneration from their successful experiments of brewing can be found in the chest. Uh, except that was a potion of, that was a bottle of experience, but I understand what you're trying to go for, Matt. Despite the circumstances, the builders found happiness. They would dance in the streets with music from Disc 5 playing in the background. At least they would, until fate once again came banging on their door. A builder would go off mining some materials one day when they would hear something familiar. Something that sends a bolt of fear through their bodies. The wither a found blast. them. He ran home to warn the others. The city sounds the sirens and soldiers begin to march. The ancient builders are preparing for war once again. The explosions grow louder and louder. The wither is slowly blasting its way through their intricate cave system. <laughs> Fortunately, they they'd planned an escape route. Oh, In the boy. center of the ancient city is a large circular structure. The smaller versions of these found within the game files call these small portal statues. And if these are in fact small portals, then the large one in the city center must be a real portal. A big one. Underneath Supposedly. the portal, redstone circuits are found. These were experiments using different kinds of power output to try and ignite the portal, but up to this point, nothing had worked. So instead, they decided to turn to the most powerful source of energy they knew of, souls. Directly underneath the portal oh, are great. blocks Here we go of soul again. sand that are lit. As the wither gets closer and closer, breaking through the final wall into the city, the portal finally ignites. But instead of celebration, there's nothing but stunned silence. Something is coming out of the portal. A horrifying creature with no eyes that lives off the power of souls, storing them in its chest cavity, the Warden. Now they're just left with the Godzilla vs. King Kong situation. Two <laughs> powerful beings duking it out. And then... The and as that scientist said in that movie, let them fight. Builders hear it. A cry that they never thought they'd hear. The death cry of the wither. The builders are stunned. The wither, this thing that caused them to lose everything, is now gone. And their music disc 5 happened to record the entire event. This is a cause for celebration. The builders begin to start the party, Ooh. only for the warden to turn its attention to them. It's triggered by sound, yeah, it doesn't and so like it starts noise. to attack anything that makes a noise. With each death, a new block forms. The Skulk, a sentient block that uses the power of souls from fallen mobs to spread across the other blocks. Once again, the builders' lives are in danger, but after all they've been through, they just don't have the energy to run anymore. Instead, they try to live in harmony with the warden. They We're do what they die. can to deaden the noises so by placing carpets or wool blocks all over the city. But in the end, it's no good. Each opening of a chest would send the warden into a rampage. This is no way to live. And so the ancient builders try to leave their home one final time. They continue deeper into the caves, somewhere that not even the warden could find them. Though they needed something strong enough to hold it back if it ever tried to invade. And so the builders created strongholds, a place fortified <laughs> so as to protect it against attack. The ancient builders made winding pathways and They need something strong to hold it back, so they made a stronghold. No Or duh. so they could escape <laughs> the warden should it ever break in. And the builders made one final attempt at escape. One last portal that this time would have to work. The end portal. The builders bid farewell to the overworld and jump in, not knowing what might be waiting for them on the other side, and also unsure if they'd ever be able to return. <laughs> With the Wells Fargo Hold on, we'll be right back. Go active cash card. You earn 2% cash back on what you want, like nope. first date Hold plans, on. and need. No, no, no. Just my shoe. Like maybe shoes without laces. The Wells Fargo active cash card. That's real life ready. There's nothing more powerful than you making your thing happen. Really going. 